Good, happy Sunday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this week and this edition of Politics with Riley King. We have a lot of political news to get to this Sunday's edition of Politics with Riley King, so let's begin. Today is Sunday, November 10, 2019. Let's get started. First up, let's take a look at your 2020 New Hampshire candidate tracker for today. We have one candidate today in New Hampshire, and that one candidate is Pete Buttigieg. He has three events today in New Hampshire. His first event, walking tour of downtown Littleton, New Hampshire at 9.30 a.m. His second event, canvas kickoff in Claremont, New Hampshire at 1 p.m. And his third event, is Town Hall at Walpole Middle School in Walpole, New Hampshire at 2.30 p.m. Those are the three events that Pete Buttigieg has today in New Hampshire. Voters weigh in on candidate choices ahead of primaries. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Let's go knock on some doors because I plan on winning New Hampshire. At a canvassing kickoff event in Concord, Joe Biden serves chili to supporters alongside local members of the Firefighters Union. He has the experience and he's an icon of the American dream. He knows what it's like to work. Dave Thornson is visiting from Michigan and cashing in on the opportunities a trip to New Hampshire can offer during primary season. We got to meet Andrew Yang the other night at the Barley House and talk to him a little bit. Tulsi Gabbard is also in the state today with a town hall in Lebanon. Pete Buttigieg making several stops, including a barn party here in New Hampton. I'm encountering so many voters who are clearly getting into decision mode. I remember back when it was get to know you mode. New Hampshire voters are known to want to meet all of the candidates more than once. I like anything that's involved with social justice because I do think that we're missing a lot of compassion and humanity in today's uh, discourse in our country. Marty Elkins, a voter from Moultonboro, is looking ahead to who could compete in the general election. Kind of concerned about how far left some of us are leaning and maybe that it's more appropriate. And I think here in New Hampshire, finding someone who's a little more moderate is helpful. For Thornson, a far left candidate may have his vote in the primary, but he sees Joe Biden as a strong choice come next November. I know a lot of Republicans in my hometown that have told me that they would vote for Joe Biden. So when you think about it that way, in terms of winning the general election, you know, I got to support him. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News Not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Bloomberg to bypass New Hampshire, other early voting states in expected run for president. Former New York City mayor's national strategy, if successful, could threaten future influence of first in the nation primary. Let's take a listen to that video from WR News 9. Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. In January, Michael Bloomberg said this to WMUR about the first in the nation primary. It is part of America. It's part of our culture and each campaign. That's the one thing you have in common. You know you got to go up and you got to make a case to the voters of New Hampshire. But it turns out he won't make a case to New Hampshire voters as he takes another step towards a 2020 run. 
The former New York City mayor filed Friday night to be on Alabama's Democratic primary ballot for president. A Bloomberg spokesperson tells News 9 if he runs, he'll avoid the four early voting states of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, and Nevada, and instead focus on the March 3rd Super Tuesday primaries and beyond. No candidate who has ever bypassed New Hampshire has been ultimately successful. And Michael Bloomberg is worth $52 billion, and so he can basically blanket the nation with advertising. WMUR political reporter John DeStaso says if Bloomberg goes on to become the Democratic nominee, it could be a major threat to the process in New Hampshire. We would always be first in the nation legally, but how much attention will be paid to the New Hampshire primary if Michael Bloomberg is successful in bypassing the primary? The state's Democratic Party chair is disappointed and surprised, adding it's unfortunate that Michael Bloomberg doesn't want to participate in this invaluable, important, and unique primary process and be tested the same way that the other Democratic candidates have been and will be. Despite filing in Alabama, Bloomberg has not yet announced a formal decision to enter the race. You can read more by going to John DeStaso's story on WMUR.com. Live in the studio, Mike Cronin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think of and how you feel about Michael Bloomberg not going to file in New Hampshire for the primary ballot. And also, how do you feel about Michael Bloomberg entering the race for president? Buttigieg, Biden, respond to Bloomberg possibly getting into the race. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. Several Democrats hoping to oust Donald Trump in the next presidential election are filing to get on the primary ballot in New Hampshire. I caught up with several of the candidates on the road to discuss the state of the race and the possible late entrance of a big city mayor. This morning, the already crowded campaign trail now facing the prospect of yet another candidate. There is nobody I'd rather run against than little Michael. That I can tell you. President Trump offering a familiar nickname to Michael Bloomberg, the former New York City mayor reportedly close to jumping in. With regard to Michael Bloomberg, I welcome in the race. Michael's a solid guy, and let's see where it goes. Democratic hopefuls descending on New Hampshire, reacting to the news as they race to meet the state's filing deadline to get their names on the first-in-the-nation primary ballot. Do you think at this late stage in the game there's room for another billionaire candidate running for president? You know, I'll leave that to the pundits. Uh, you know, uh, welcome him to the race. Always good to see uh, another mayor stepping up. Sources close to Bloomberg telling ABC News he's considering a run in part out of fear Elizabeth they Warren could win the nomination, this is, who he this believes is would have trouble beating general. President Trump. It's not enough just to have somebody come in and say they're going to buy this election. It's not enough. But Warren, who's been enjoying a rise in the polls, is now finding a target on her back. Andrew Yang, among those joining billionaire Bill Gates, questioning her proposed wealth tax. France, Sweden, Germany, Denmark all tried a wealth tax and they all repealed it because they had massive implementation problems and it didn't generate nearly the revenue that they'd hoped for. With less than three months until the Iowa caucuses, some Democrats like Mayor Pete Buttigieg are launching bus tours, doubling their efforts to connect with voters on a more personal level. Do you feel a sense of obligation that if you were to become president, that you would have to be an ambassador or an advocate of sorts when it comes to issues that matter to the LGBTQ community. You know, every time someone comes up to me, sometimes a teenager who says, because of your campaign, I, I, I feel like it's okay for me to come out and be myself. Or sometimes somebody my parents' age you know, with tears in their eyes because they never thought it would be possible to have a married gay man running for president. Uh, I feel the responsibility that I have. That being said, uh, I'm not running to, to be president of gay America. I'm running to be president of the United States of America. And my responsibilities are to make sure that there is a better life for everybody. 
Mayor Pete Buttigieg there getting very candid on the campaign bus. All the candidates really trying to differentiate themselves in these final months before the nominating process begins. I do want to go back to Bloomberg for a moment there. If he were to jump in, he'd be joining 17 other Democratic candidates. Uh, sources close to him say that by all indications, he's planning to run. They do want to get on the uh, ballots in all 50 states and that he would make a final decision and some kind of announcement in the next few weeks. But it looks like he may skip the key early states like Iowa and New Hampshire. They certainly know that they're just so late in the game. Yeah. All the other candidates have had the ground game for months. Um, they're hoping for more of a national-type campaign if he is to get in. Out of field. Yeah. Yep, sure is. Thank you, Whit. Great reporting. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that's it for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. And I hope you all enjoyed this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. And I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everyone, and have a great week ahead of you as well. Goodbye.